Hi there, and welcome to the Alberta Update, a look at what's happening in your province. We are thrilled to be launching this new service for you, this new program, as a way of keeping you up to date on all the things that your government is up to. I am your host, Bruce McAllister. My day job, I'm the Executive Director of the Premier's Southern Office in Calgary. Uh, so you're probably wondering, what can you expect on this program? Well, we will highlight the issues of the day, those making news, the things that impact you, and we will bring you the Premier on to chat about those issues. We will interview ministers about the key initiatives in their areas, again, focusing specifically on the issues that really impact you as an Albertan. We will do this program weekly when the legislature is sitting every other week when it is not. And coming up today, we have a jam-packed 20 or 30 minutes for you. We have the Premier coming on to uh, chat about the, the latest issues, all of those things that are making headlines. Uh, we will look at the issue on every Calgarian parent's mind right now. That comes to the E. coli outbreak, of course, and what's happening at daycares. We'll address that. Uh, we will hear from uh, Health Minister Adriana Lagrange. We will have Education Minister Demetrius Nicolaitis joining us to talk about uh, new funding for school buses. And Public Safety and Emergency Service Minister Mike Ellis is going to drop by the program. Uh, big announcement from the province this week that should impact the safety on the streets here in Alberta. All that and much more in the next 20 or 30 minutes. We are going to kick things off, though, by saying uh, hello to Premier Danielle Smith, who is the first guest on our on our launch here. Uh, Premier, great to have you. Thanks for taking some time. Oh, Bruce, so nice to talk to you again. I'm looking forward to this. Yes, and uh, hopefully we can we can provide a lot of information for people. I know they're craving it. Premier, I know the first thing you would want to address uh, will be the issue with the daycares and the E. coli outbreak in Calgary. We are going to have Minister LaGrange on for a bit of a debriefing on this and dive into it a little deeper. Uh, but just your thoughts, first of all, to those impacted and, and the, what the province is trying to do about it. Yeah, I mean, what a horrible situation for these families. When you think of, uh, we're now over 200 cases that have tested positive for E. coli. And sadly, over 20 people who have had to be in hospital. We're glad we're seeing that some have been discharged. But there are some little kids who are in really uh, dire situation. And so we're watching this. I think that the doctors have done an amazing job of addressing it very quickly, making sure that patient care was the number one priority. And at the same time, we did a, a press conference earlier this week, uh, Adriana LaGrange and Cyril Turton, our two ministers on this file, did a press conference with uh, Dr. Mark Joffe, who is our, our public health uh, chief medical officer. And there's a parallel process going on doing the examination of what happened here. It, it All roads seem to be pointing to this common kitchen uh, which 11 daycares were using. Fortunately, not all of them were impacted. Four of them were not impacted. And they got the, the go-ahead to open up earlier in the week. The, uh, the others are getting the go-ahead after sanitation and uh, absolute um, measures were taken to ensure the safety of the kids. But we've got some work to do. We've got we've to address the issue of what happened with this common kitchen and then start looking at some new regulations around that. We do. And uh, listen, we'll talk to Minister LaGrange about it in a few more minutes to, to, to talk a little more deeply about some of the things uh, involved, but I know you wanted to address it. Uh, listen, uh, I want to chat, chat with you about a big announcement that was made this week uh, uh, by Ministers Ellis and, uh, and, and Justice Minister, Minister Amory as well. Uh, I know public safety and the safety for Albertans is top of mind for you. It always has been as you campaigned and obviously went through the election. Um, give us some details, uh, Premier, about the announcement that was made and what your hoping the result will be for Albertans. I can I can tell you when we got reelected, I was talking to my new Justice Minister, Mickey Amory, as well as Mike Ellis, who has experience as a, a former Calgary member of the Calgary Police Service, and he's been my public safety minister since last year. Uh, we, we've been very frustrated that Ottawa has this catch and release program for some of the worst offenders. They, <laughs> they are the ones who are uh, creating an environment where it's it's increasingly difficult to keep really bad people behind bars. And I, I just said to them both, what can we do? And they've come up with a suite of actions that allow for us to take matters into our own hands. Policing and administration of justice is a provincial responsibility. So we have the ability to, to take some measures. And so they're going to be making sure that we have 
uh, zero tolerance on uh, some of these violent crimes that are happening in Calgary and Edmonton in particular, putting more officers on the street, and also uh, get, having a special prosecution office so that when these guys keep coming back over and over and over again, we have the ability to, to keep them behind bars while they await trial and hopefully that we can, can get some proper sentencing. People are just sick and tired every time they turn on the television or open up a newspaper or go online, seeing some random attack has occurred, someone's been stabbed, somebody has been assaulted, there's open air drug use. All of this is, uh, it's reached a point where it's intolerable and we're gonna make sure that we're taking action so people can feel safe and get the streets back again. Well said, and more to come uh, from uh, uh, Public Safety and um, Emergency Service Minister Mike Ellis will be joining us shortly. Uh, Premier, not long ago, the Minister of Finance, Nate Horner, released uh, the quarterly fiscal update, projecting a larger than expected surplus. Uh, what does this mean for Albertans, do you think, going forward? I think there, were, there was a lot of people who were very concerned because we have a new budget framework in place that requires us to have a balanced budget, and we're absolutely committed to that. We also have new rules around how surpluses when they materialize have to be spent 50 percent have to go to debt repayment and then the other 50 percent can either go to debt repayment or putting more money into savings or a one-time spending that does not increase your over your operational spending and so we worked really hard on putting that framework together and so there was a lot of conjecture with oil prices and gas prices being as volatile about whether we were on track and so i was so pleased to see that even though oil and gas revenues are down because of that volatility we have corporate income tax revenue up and we've got personal income tax revenue up. And that what that says is that we have now created an environment where there's so much confidence to invest in Alberta. More businesses are coming here. More businesses are becoming profitable. More businesses are hiring more people. And all of that is developing new streams of long-term sustainable revenue. And I, I think that that is the, the, the model that we've been striving for for the last four years. I'm glad to see that it's beginning to materialize. So I was so pleased with that announcement. Yep. Well done and well said. Hey, listen, we're mid-September. Uh, you have a fall legislative session coming up. I realize that's that's a ways away yet uh, until we get to November. Uh, but let's foreshadow a bit if we could. What can Albertans expect to see? Uh, from your government in session and going forward? What are, your, what are your key priorities you're working on? You know, it's funny. We're going to be spending the next couple of days in uh, our caucus meeting where we're finalizing some of this. But it, it does strike me that we set our budget, we set our priorities last year uh, for what we wanted to be focusing on. And it was standing up to Ottawa and making sure people understand that we are going to defend our jurisdiction, affordability, uh, as well as the um, uh, issues around jobs and economy and fixing healthcare. And it's interesting, here we are, we've made some great progress on all of those, but those are going to be the exact same priorities that we have right now. So you're going to see that we have to push back in a major way against Ottawa. And I, I saw that this was coming. I was hoping that we'd be able to find some, co some collaboration on how we can reach carbon neutrality by 2050, but they keep on putting things out there like emissions caps and clean electricity regs and various other things. And, and so we're going to be pushing pretty hard to, to make sure that we defend our jurisdiction. That'll be one thing that you'll see. Uh, we have a new health minister, Adriana Lagrange, mm -hmm. who brings just a wealth of knowledge to the role, having been in education before, which is a very complex, large, uh, large ministry. She's going to be bringing forward some reforms in the fall that uh, will allow us to restructure healthcare so that it works so much better than it does right now. I'm very excited about that. We have more work to do on affordability. I've been watching what's happening at our major cities and in particular Calgary about how they are making changes to allow for the construction and the fast tracking of housing so that we can keep housing affordable. And we're going to do what we can to respond to those requests so that we are so that we're able to work hand in hand in making housing uh, an option once again for young people and uh, as well jobs economy that's going to continue to be a focus we've got our taxpayer protection act that's one of the things i campaigned on saying it would be bill that's one right. and it's going to be bill one we're going to make sure that people know that the only way taxes are going is down. We will, uh, if any, if there was ever a proposal to increase corporate or personal income taxes, we'd have to put it to a referendum, just like we have right now in law. If there was ever any uh, any uh, thought of a sales tax, would have to be put to the people. So we're just going to strengthen that environment so that we can continue to keep that business confidence. Premier, I know how busy your schedule is. Uh, I appreciate you taking time to be our, our first guest on the Alberta Update as we bring this uh, this new program to Albertans. Thanks for taking some time and uh, listen, have a, have a great day. We'll see you soon.
You bet. You sure will. All right. Premier Danielle Smith joining us uh, on the program. And uh, she touched on a lot of issues that we're going to follow up on now. Uh, specifically, the E. coli outbreak in Calgary and Okotoks that has so many parents on edge. Uh, there are more than 250 lab confirmed cases of E. coli connected to this outbreak, uh, connected to several daycares. There are more than 20 patients, mainly children, unfortunately, uh, receiving care in hospital. A detailed investigation, we can tell you, is underway to determine the source of the contamination, which is uh, believed to be a food source from the central kitchen that is used by these daycares. Uh, Here to provide more details on this investigation is uh, Health Minister Adriana LaGrange, who we are always pleased to see. Uh, Minister LaGrange, thanks for joining us. Yeah, you know, first and foremost, look, you're a mother, you're a a grandmother, and uh, you have you have no doubt uh, kneeled on the bedside beside sick kids. You know what it's like. Uh, a message for the parents and the families that are involved in this right now and going through it in uh, in Alberta. Well, I know how heartbreaking it is. Um, I am a mother of seven. I'm a grandmother of eight. Any one of those children could be one of my grandchildren right now. And uh, I, I feel um, just so so much for the parents and the grandparents and all of the family members because it is heartbreaking. It's hard to see a little one suffer and and to be at their bedside knowing that uh, you have to entrust the healthcare professionals to do what they need to do to make them well. And I can assure you that we have some of the best healthcare professionals in the whole world working on this. And uh, so that should be comforting to the parents and the grandparents, et cetera, the family members. But that being said, we need to get to the bottom of this issue, find out what was the cause and make sure that it never happens again. No one should have to go through this. Uh, very well said. Look, it's it's probably too early to draw any conclusions here, but I do have to ask you, what do we know about the investigation into the cause and potential uh, changes to make sure that it doesn't happen again? So, so right now we know um, that uh, these children all belong to daycares that utilize a centralized kitchen. So this centralized kitchen, um, while we cannot pinpoint that it is exactly coming from there, um, the healthcare professionals that are AHS professionals that are in fact uh, doing the investigation. And I can tell you as soon as it became a E. coli outbreak, um, the investigation started immediately. Uh, They went in and reinvestigated the kitchen to to, uh, determine uh, you know, if, is it a food source, et cetera. So they're in the process of that investigation. Um, the high likelihood is around this kitchen uh, because it is the central theme to all of the illnesses. Um, again, I, I just want to put it out there that we, we are not uh, sure until the investigation is complete. So we are awaiting a final report from those healthcare professionals. Minister, is there anything else that Albertans uh, should know in considering the uncertainty and the unease that may be out there with some parents? uh, They're undoubtedly experiencing this after this situation. Anything else that they should know? Well, I, I would say they should know that uh, that uh, AHS is on it. Uh, we have the healthcare professionals, excellent healthcare professionals, that are in fact treating all of the children, uh, making sure that they communicate with the families, and uh, will be following the children um, in in the long term. Uh, also, they should know that AHS uh, professionals that are in fact doing the investigation are going to um, they're pulling out all the stops to make sure that we get down to the root cause of this illness. Uh, so that it never happens again and and we can determine next steps. And of course, um, just want to give a shout out to all of the healthcare professionals that have gone above and beyond. Um, They are, of of course, uh, right now, I I should give you a bit of an update. We do have 310 lab confirmed positive cases. That is up uh, uh, 46 from yesterday. We had 264 yesterday. Uh, But we are actually down on the number of people that are in hospital. We had 25 yesterday we're down to 21 um, and we have seven on uh, dialysis Um, all all of this only to say that this is very very serious we've taken it serious from the very beginning initially we were um, we were following a gastrointestinal infection which then became an E. coli breakout and I I have to tell you that uh, from the day that we heard of this I was getting daily updates in communication with AHS and Alberta health staff And uh, we are doing everything we possibly can to get to the root cause of this and make sure that no, no parent, no grandparent, and especially no child 
should ever have to go through this. Well said. Minister, thank you for your time. My pleasure. There is Health Minister Adriana LaGrange joining us. Well, whether you're taking your kids to the uh, playground, down the street, riding public transit, uh, or going to and from work, Albertans deserve to be safe. There is, uh, there's no question about that. But following uh, changes by the current federal government to the bail system, there's been a pointed increase in crime in our cities. It's led to random attacks and increases in violence that has impacted innocent bystanders. That's why the Alberta government is now implementing a zero-tolerance policy approach uh, Public Safety and Emergency Services Minister Mike Ellis joins us today to talk more about this, these new changes, which include targeted prosecution units and a stricter bail protocol to better protect Albertans from violent criminal activity. Minister Ellis, thank you for taking some time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Bruce, and uh, always a pleasure to be on your show. You know, I think it's well documented, Minister, that many of these crimes have been committed uh, by public offenders who shouldn't be on the street in the first place. Uh, this is federally regulated. I should point that out. How does your government plan to deal with this? Well, look, uh, this all goes back, Bruce, to Bill C-75 that the federal government put into place in 2019. It really did some quite honestly, irreparable harm to the bail uh, system, uh, not just in Alberta, right throughout Canada. Um, I can tell you that, uh, and I've been very public about this, Canadians are less safe as a result of uh, Bill C-75. As you're fully aware, we've taken a very proactive approach to dealing with this. Uh, you're fully aware, Bruce, of the officers that we've put on the streets to make sure that police have the necessary resources, public pre uh, uh, officer presence is a, a, a big thing. But what we're doing here is just taking it to another level. As the Premier indicated, we're going to do whatever it takes to keep uh, Albertans safe. And, and that's, that's why uh, Minister Amory has made sure that uh, all the uh, prosecutors have the necessary um, uh, resources in order to uh, not just prosecute cases, but actually do bail hearings. Uh, we are we are we are taking a zero tolerance approach to violent repeat criminal offenders, uh, and uh, we are going to do whatever we can within our our you know our our ability or our powers that we have within the province uh, to uh, let offenders know that you right. will be held to task and that you will have a bail hearing, and then we'll leave it to the courts to decide whether or not you'll be released or detained. Look, the premier mentioned it, and I just it's worth reiterating. You were a police officer for a decade or more. At yeah. the end of the day, you know this better than most. Albertans just want to feel safe in their communities. They they deserve to. Uh, Minister Ellis, are, is the Calgary and Edmonton police departments on board with this plan? Can you speak to that and working with them to make sure it's implemented? So they are. I have uh, I've spoken to both uh, chiefs in, in, in Calgary uh, and Edmonton. Um, Look, part of being a police officer is making sure that you have a symbiotic relationship with the, the, the Crown Prosecutor's Office. You know, we're all rowing in the same direction. We are all representing or working for the people of Alberta. So, the, you know, the police, they need to do what they can to, uh, you know, catch, uh, catch that offender, make sure that that person is, is brought into court. And then it's up to the prosecutors. And that's why we made sure that the, those prosecutors have all the necessary tools. And that's why we have these... Mm -hmm. These uh, these targeted um, uh, uh, Crown uh, prosecutor offices in both Calgary and Edmonton so that we made sure that there's resources so that violent repeat criminal offenders are not going to get away with the let's make a deal program. They will be having a bail hearing and held to task. Look, the, the last thing that people want to see is Calgary and Edmonton streets turn into downtown Vancouver's east side. Uh, this zero tolerance po policy, you've, you've touched on it, but I'm going to press you again. Does it give police the resources and the tools that they need to make the arrests that they need to make to make sure that our streets are safe? Well, it gives, certainly gives them it gives them the confidence. It's like anything in a relationship. You know, they want the confidence that the work that they are doing is when they when they bring it into the courts that it's it's not going to be tossed aside uh, that they're not going to see that that violent repeat criminal offender uh, out on the streets and that the police themselves are not going to lose faith in the justice system and and this this is this is everybody has a role to play and this is why I say you know, police do your job prosecutors do your job but mm -hmm. as I've said right to the federal government they have a role to play this in this as well, which is why when it comes to Bill C-48, we were really disappointed that they did not uh, not go through with this. When I said immediate and substantive changes to the criminal code, they didn't deal with this in the spring. And now we as a, not just a country, but as a province are having to wait for them 
to get through this in the fall. If Look, I know you've got, yeah, I know you've got a lot of support from Albertans on this, and I, I know how passionate you are about it. We appreciate the work that you're doing. Uh, listen, thanks for taking some time out of your schedule to join us today. Thank you very much, Bruce. Deputy Premier, Public Safety and Emergency Services Minister Mike Ellis joining us. Well, Alberta Premier Daniel Smith has made it very clear, abundantly clear, that uh, we will not comply with a federal push to have a net zero electricity grid by 2035. Uh, there are estimates that that could move, uh, could cost us trillions of, uh, of dollars and push Alberta's utility bills sky high. Uh, while chatting with the CBC recently, the Premier certainly didn't min mince words. Uh, here she is drawing a line in the sand on the subject. I'm really hopeful as we put our table together that we're going to come to some constructive approach so that we can reach carbon neutrality by 2050. But I have to say I'm constantly dismayed that Environment Minister Stephen Guibault continues to take shots against our province as we're trying to begin this collaborative process. He should be coming to the table in good faith and he should zip it, quite frankly, because he's not helping. When he starts talking about emissions caps, when he starts putting forward aggressive emissions reduction targets that are unachievable by 2035, I have to react to that. It's just that the, the targets being put forward by Environment Minister Stephen Guibault are arbitrary, not based on data, not based on science, seem to be plucked out of thin air, and unachievable, as well as being unconstitutional. And he's the one who's gone to China to give them advice on how to reach a 2060 target when they are bringing on two coal fire plants a week for electricity. Meanwhile, from there, he is telling us that Suncor is going to face an emissions cap. That is being provocative. He's the one who has to dial it back. And as soon as he does, we'll be happy to have a constructive conversation at the table. But he's got to stop dropping bombs and he's got to stop criticizing our industry. Now, the Premier also spoke this week, we should note, at the Carbon Capture Canada event in Edmonton about the importance of funding innovation and research into new technologies to address emissions. Uh, meantime, our Minister of Infrastructure, uh, or support me, of Innovation and Technology, Nate Glubish, announced an investment doing just that. Uh, here's a look at uh, what he had to say at that announcement. Hi there, Nate Glubish here, Minister of Technology and Innovation. And today we're here to announce $27.3 million of new funding through the Major Innovation Fund to partner with our universities, University of Alberta, University of Calgary, University of Lethbridge, and Athabasca University. This funding is gonna be a game changer for our best and brightest innovators who are researching new technologies for medical devices, for space and defense technologies, for clean energy, and so much more. I often say that technology is not just an industry, but it is the future of every industry. And the foundation of technological advance is research. And that is why today's announcement of $27.3 million of new funding through the Major Innovation Fund is so important. This investment is going to help to continue to build momentum in Alberta's tech sector. And we know that our universities are a big part of that momentum. So I can't wait to see what this investment is going to unlock. And I know Alberta's best days lie ahead. Minister Nate Glubish, uh, again, with a big announcement earlier in the week. Well, the leaves are starting to change, aren't they? The weather is cooling. It's been pretty nice lately, but it won't be long and it'll be cooling. Fall will be in the air. That, of course, means uh, back to the routine. School is back in session. Joining me now to chat more about that is uh, Education Minister Demetrius Nicolaitis. And uh, Minister Nicolaitis, thank you for taking some time today. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. I look, I know your house uh, was excited. Uh, mine certainly was. I had uh, one going into junior high that couldn't sleep, was up uh, was up first thing in the morning making breakfast. This is an exciting time of year for kids. There yeah. are changes every year this time. What, what do you want to make sure that Alberta parents know as their kids head back? Yeah, you're right. It is very much an exciting time. Uh, my two girls uh, were excited to get going. One was going into grade four, the other one into grade one. Of course, a little bit of nervousness, mostly for the grade one. Yeah. Um, but uh, indeed, an exciting time. I think there's some important things for parents to know. Um, number one thing I would say that's important for parents to know is that new resources are really starting to materialize. And that's going to help see uh, more teachers come online, more educational assistants, counselors, uh, speech language pathologists and other staff and resources uh, start to be available in the classroom. A couple of weeks ago, I saw a news article from the CB saying that they're on track to hire uh, close to uh, over 700 additional teachers and educational staff. 
so they'll start to see those changes as well. They'll, they'll see some changes with respect to homework uh, as we continue the rollout of the, of the new curriculum in English, uh, math and science and other areas as well. Hey, listen, uh, class sizes are always an issue in Alberta. And, I, you know, it's a, it's a catch-22, isn't it? Everybody wants to be here. We've got so many people moving to the province, and we're doing our, our, our part to welcome them. But class sizes are growing, and you're pressed on it every year. What is the government doing to address it and make sure those numbers are under control? Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, for the past uh, maybe a couple of years, uh, we've been saying Alberta is calling and uh, it seems like Canada and the world has been answering and we've been seeing a, an incredible amount of people moving to our, our amazing province from other provinces and from international jurisdictions, uh, which we want to see. It means that we've been successful in reversing a lot of the economic stagnation and decline when the NDP was in power. So glad that we've been able to really succeed there. Of course, as you said, that puts pressure on our schools and on our school divisions. Um, in the last budget that we passed in the spring, uh, we've provided uh, just about $2 billion in uh, additional spending over the next three years to help accommodate some of that growth. The Premier in her mandate letter has also called upon me to significantly expand schools in our growing communities. So I'm confident if we can increase uh, the, the funding in those targeted areas as we are and continue our plan to continue to build schools, uh, we can help make sure that class sizes are appropriate for all our students. Uh, one more question before I let you go. You announced some funding this week, um, I believe it was earlier this week, to better support kids with disabilities. Yes, and tell us more about that. Yeah, absolutely. We announced about $5 million uh, to support students with low incidence uh, disabilities. These are, right. these are students uh, who, uh, who may be deaf, blind, or have uh, vi visual impairment uh, or other challenges. Uh, I firmly believe that it is critically important for us to do everything that we possibly can to support uh, students with uh, with challenges and with disabilities and this additional funding is going to help to make sure that those students uh, have the support that they need. Minister Nicolaitis, always a pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care. Education Minister Dimitri Nicolaitis joining us uh, joining us on the program. Well, talking about education, Alberta's government made uh, a five million dollar investment this week at the University of Calgary for a new uh, multidisciplinary science hub. Advanced Education Minister Rajan Sani uh, joined the Dean of Science to talk about how this new hub will help uh, discover innovative solutions for the challenges that we face today and tomorrow. By making these targeted investments and working together to understand tomorrow's workforce needs, we are connecting students to fulfilling career paths that are key to Alberta's economic growth. This will really generate a pipeline of talent in research and innovation that the city has never seen before. Again, Advanced Education Minister Rajan Sani with that announcement earlier this week. Well, that does it for the first uh, episode of the Alberta Update as we bring you a first-hand look at what's happening in your province and speak to those uh, that uh, can impact change and obviously are working hard on your behalf. We plan to do these updates every week when the legislature is in session, every other week when it is not sitting. Um, and we want to explain to you how to watch it. So this is going to be available on YouTube. You can uh, always view the update on your Alberta YouTube page. Make sure to subscribe to the Alberta update. Again, it's on YouTube. You just go to youtube.com uh, slash at your Alberta and you hit the subscribe button. And uh, again, we'll, we'll keep, um, we'll keep uh, uh, churning out the interviews and the information that you need on the, on the issues that impact you as an Albertan. So thank you for taking some time to join us on this first episode and we will see you again shortly. Good day. Thank you.